this happened about seven or so years ago, and I've never really talked about it all too much, but I guess I just figured this would be the time to share it. So when I was younger, my mother used to gamble a lot. Due to this, we would always be getting free hotel rooms at the various hotels. I always loved going to these hotels, as it got me out of my house, and sometimes I even made new friends. Although I would never ever see them again because they were all from different states, it was still fun to have someone to play a nice game of Marco Polo with at the pool. Nothing usually happened out of the ordinary. I would usually go down to the cafe and get a frappuccino or something, then go to the pool and hang out until it closed, or if I got tired. But on this day, something really strange happened. I was sitting on one of the lounge chairs right at the edge of the pool when a guy who was probably about 20 to 21 years old then starts talking to me. He seemed really friendly, but something just seemed really off to me. He was talking about how he knew me from somewhere, when I just knew for sure he didn't. I had never seen this man before in my life anywhere. He told me that he was military, and he asked if I wanted to go up to his hotel room to see his military outfit. At this point, I was just thinking, what the hell? How stupid does this guy think I am? So I just gave him a smile and then said, no, I'm about to go swimming, sorry. He told me that he was going to put it on and then come back down and show me. And as soon as he left, I then took that opportunity to go get up and find one of the workers at the pool. I told them what had happened and the worker seemed pretty weirded out, but she then assured me she'd take care of it. Cut forward to about 10 to 15 minutes later, this guy comes walking down in the most fake looking low quality get up I've ever seen in my life. He starts standing by the edge of the pool trying to talk to me when one of the hotel workers then approach him and they then tell him he needs to leave. He was then escorted out and I didn't see him again after that. I mean, I definitely wasn't as scared as I should have been, but I guess I didn't really think too much of it at the time, as I had never really had something like that happen to me before. But I'm really glad that 10 year old me had enough sense to go tell an adult that I felt unsafe about it. Definitely glad I did that. This happened around 1997 when my family moved back to our home state after just a few years of living pretty much all over the place. I was 10 years old and having a really fun summer hanging out with cousins who I hadn't really seen in a really long time. It was a particularly pretty hot and boring summer day, so my cousins and I had decided to go to the community pool. It was pretty close to my house, so we got on our bikes and rode over for an afternoon of fun. Now, we lived in a really small and safe town, so our parents were pretty used to us going off by ourselves. We told them we'd all head back home right after the pool closed for the day, like we always did. We all really had a blast that day, and when it was finally time for the pool to close, my brother and cousin Jake went into the boys' locker room, and my cousin Alice and I went into the girls' locker room. I ended up changing rather quickly than Alice, so I went into the lobby to see if the boys were out there yet. The lobby was pretty chaotic, with parents trying to herd kids out and groups like ours trying to find everyone before leaving. It was pretty noisy, busy, and tough to navigate for little four-foot-nothing me. As I looked around for the boys, I had then felt someone grab onto my arm and start to lead me towards the exit. Since there were so many people there, I had thought someone had just mistaken me for their kid. So I looked up at the red-haired man that had my arm, and I then shouted, Hey, what are you doing? He barely looked down at me and started moving more insistently, staring really intently right at the exit as we slowly moved through the crowd. I then shouted, Let go of me! and he didn't even flinch or even acknowledge that I had spoken to him. That's when it then dawned on me that this wasn't a mistake. He was actually trying to take me. I froze. I started trying to remember what they had told us to do in school about stranger danger and how to act, but I was just drawing a blank. I eventually tried to shout out, I don't know you, but it just came out as a really tiny squeak and there was no one around me to seem to notice in all the chaos. I was scared. Finally, after what felt like forever, my cousin Jake came out of the locker room and he then spotted me. 
We made eye contact and I think he could see just how scared and confused I looked. He shouted my name, looked at the guy who had my arm, and then screamed, Let go of my cousin! I don't think the guy was expecting that. He immediately froze, looked at Jake, then dropped my arm and slid back into the crowd. He just left. I was so relieved though, and I didn't care. I then ran over to Jack, who had then asked me if I was okay. I was barely able to talk at that point, so I just nodded and held onto his arm until everyone else came out. We never really talked about it after that. I've told my partner about it a few times, and my closest friends also know the story. I became pretty obsessive after this. Things like searching for sex offenders in our area to see if I could find this man. Also looking through news articles to see if anything like this happened in our area around that time. But I never really found anything, and eventually, I just gave up. I still really hate that I completely froze up in that moment, and I just really can't believe how lucky I was that Jake came out when he did. It's still just so crazy to think about. When I was in high school, I used to visit my dad every summer in Florida. He lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and my best friend had also moved in the same complex with her little sister. My dad had to clean up the apartment that day, and he's pretty meticulous whenever he cleans. So, he had told me to go play with my best friend for a while. We decided to go to the pool in the complex and go swimming. Her little sister had just had a surgery like a week prior, and she wasn't allowed to get her stitches wet. I had decided to invite another friend that also lived in that area as well. Her father dropped her off at the pool and we began swimming while my best friend's little sister was playing on her phone. Her little sister and I had to go to the bathroom and the pool bathrooms were closing soon. I had warned my best friend to go before they closed them, but she said she didn't have to go, as well as my other friend. As I suspected, not even 20 minutes later after the pool bathrooms close, my best friend had to go to the bathroom. Since my apartment was the closest, she opted to go there, but my dad was cleaning so she had to walk all the way to the other side of the complex then go to the bathroom at her house. There was an older couple who had decided to come to the pool and use the jacuzzi behind us as we played. It was taking kind of a long time for my best friend to come back, so I started to get a little worried. I told my younger friends to stay there while I went to go look for her. I finally found my best friend who was walking back to the pool wrapped in her towel. I saw about two men a short distance behind her, but I didn't really think too much of it at the time. So we began walking together, but it takes about 10 minutes to get back to the pool, and not once did their path differ from ours. I got a really bad feeling deep in the pit of my stomach and decided to pick up the pace a little bit while going back to the pool. We got there before the men did, and I told her little sister to gather all of our things and go to the other side of the pool near the older couple. The rest of us jumped in the pool and went swimming to the deep end to try and get away from the men. That's when the men then finally showed up to the pool. They were looking back at the older couple and then right back at us as if they were weighing their options or something. The men kept whispering back and forth at each other while looking at us, but they decided to leave. I got really freaked out and called my dad and the older couple had asked if we were okay. They asked if we had known the men, but we told them no. Our parents were furious and came straight down to the pool. The police were eventually called and the older couple had waited for our parents to arrive. When the police finally came, we had gave them a description of the two men. They had actually searched the entire complex, but they couldn't find a single trace of the two men. The police took our statements and then left. Everyone had to basically go back home. During that summer, no one was allowed to leave the house without their parents being there. That's how freaked out they all were. After that, I never really thought about the incident again. That is, until I was a junior in high school. When I turned on the TV one night after school to watch the news, the two men's faces were all over the news. The men were arrested in Miami for being smugglers into a sex trafficking ring. My face grew white as I had then called my best friend. She saw their faces on TV and started to cry, as she then realized that it was the same two men who had stalked us not even two years prior. About a month later, I had got a call from my dad saying that some police officers would like to talk to me. 
I was already heading down there for the next summer anyway in a couple of days. When I got to Florida, I had already found out that my best friend, her little sister, as well as my other friend had already talked to the police. I also found out that there had also been other reports around the same time that our event happened. About 17 other girls had been stalked in our area by the same two creepy men. They ended up using our statements in court to go and put them in jail. I'm just really glad that my gut had the right feeling about those guys. The point of this story is to always trust your gut if you feel something's wrong. Please, you might not be as lucky as my friends and I. Always pay attention to your surroundings and be careful. I was 12 years old at the time and I and my family would always go to this private club that had a lot of different things. I'm gonna list some of them off so you get an idea. There are 30 tennis courts, 11 indoor racquetball courts, 2 basketball, 2 volleyball courts and a huge open field with a pool in the middle. It was a normal Friday. My family got there and my friend Zach also came with us. We stayed and played with each other pretty much all night that night. We're both pretty athletic boys and we really love to run and play basketball. I've been mistaken for a girl before, so that might have been what happened here. I was wearing pretty athletic shorts, which were maybe about 5 inches too short. I was wearing basically short shorts. Anyways, so I and Zach had went into the pool and started playing Marco Polo. A man had approached us and got within about 3 feet from us, and he just stood there, not even talking at all. We didn't really think anything of it and just moved out of the way, thinking that he was a dad and just trying to get somewhere. As we moved from the side, I then felt a pinch right on my butt. This had never happened to me before and I was a little too innocent to realize what had happened. I whispered to my friend that the dude just pinched my butt and he laughed it off. This guy about 5 minutes later then comes back to us and again just sits there. Me and Zach are totally freaking out now because this man had pinched my butt and he's now following us. Zag then decided to see if he would test if he would pinch him instead, then went swimming by him. He didn't pinch Zach and he got a little closer to me. I take a step backwards and then swim as fast as I can over to Zach. This time I think he tried to grab my butt but only succeeded in brushing my thigh. I freaked out and I then told Zach that I'm getting out of the pool and playing basketball. He made fun of me calling me a scaredy cat, but my gut told me that something was off. We get out of the pool and we walk over to tell our parents where we were going. As we're walking in a tiny stretch of dirt that separates the pool from everything else, I saw this man getting out of the water and walking our way. Based on what just happened, I totally freaked. I started pulling on Zach and we ran to the courts. Luckily some people were already there playing, so we just joined in. I didn't know their ages, but I'm assuming about 16. One of them was a girl. She realized that I was distressed and she asked me if something was wrong. I began speaking in a really whiny voice. Hey, are you alright? The girl asked. There's this man that grabbed my butt and thigh in the pool and he's walking over here. Do you know where he is now? The girl then asked. I shook my head and just said that he was walking over here now. As if on cue he walks out from the corner and I pointed at him. The girl walked over to her friend and I thought I was on my own again until they all come back over and then tell the dude off. Instead of this guy walking away he just sits on the plaza right next to the courts and starts staring at me. While I know I can't prove it I could tell that he was totally staring at my butt and junk. For literally about an hour, he just stood there, not looking away and not on his phone. The teenagers eventually left and this guy walked over to us. We ran over to the tennis courts and of course he followed. After like 30 minutes, he left and we ran to the main grass field to find this guy waiting for us yet again. The man then pushed my friend to the ground and then he started grabbing me. No, more like choked me and then he pushed me right up against the wall. Then he started grabbing me and touching my butt. The man started doing these really weird sounds like aggressive moans and Oh yeah, I really like this girl, give me more and actually tried to mess with my shorts. Thank God I was wearing a belt. 
My friend got up and then he started pushing the man, but it was more like a weak shove instead. When that didn't work, I then took the opportunity to get out of the chokehold and then start biting his arm. We ran to my parents and we then told them everything that happened. The man for some reason went back to his towel like nothing was wrong, leaving a trail of blood along the way. When we got to my mom, she had asked me what's wrong and she then saw the bruise marks all over my body. Then she asked me if I fell. I started to shake my head and the only thing I could manage to get out was, there was a man. My mom got more scared and furious than I've ever seen her in my life. She asked me to point him out and I did. I don't know what happened after that because my parents sent me to my friend's house that day. The man ended up getting arrested, but I don't know anything else after that. Like I said at the beginning of this story, I'm not really sure if he just thought I was a woman or what, but it's seriously the creepiest thing I've ever experienced. When I was around 11 years old, my dad took my little brother and I to a public pool. We went swimming for a few hours there. The place is pretty big and it has this area that's sort of like a beach where you can lay down your towel if you want, and you can also sit on the steps surrounding the water. Everything was pretty fine at first. We were playing in the water with all the other little kids like we usually did, but there was this one kid there who just wouldn't leave me alone. He started with just bugging me and following me around, which wasn't really a big deal because I was kind of used to playing with annoying kids. Then he started touching me and poking me, and whenever I asked him to stop, he said that he could touch me wherever he wanted. Then he touched my breasts. I was getting really upset and trying to get away from him, but he just kept swimming after me. He went under the water and tried to actually swim between my legs. No matter what I did, he wouldn't leave me alone. I finally got out of the water and I then ran over to my dad. I was really out of breath so he could tell something was wrong. But when he asked, I just said nothing and just sat down next to him until we left. When we were getting in the car, my dad started telling us about this kid who was bothering all the girls in the pool. He was jumping on their backs and doing other things as well, like trying to cop a feel. And one of the girls actually punched him in the face. I think by the way I was acting, my dad had realized something was up and he asked if the kid touched me as well. That's when I confessed and I said that he did. He was kind of mad that I hadn't said something while we were still in the pool so that he could do something about it. I don't know why I was so scared to tell him. I think I was just a little ashamed about it. My whole life, I've always felt really stupid for being affected by this moment. I guess because the person touching me was a kid like me. It was terrifying though. I felt completely powerless. I guess I didn't know up until that moment that if someone wanted to come up and touch me, they could just do it and I couldn't defend myself. I really wish that I would have punched him in the face like that other girl had, but I guess I was just too scared and just really wanted to get away from him. I guess I should just be glad that's all that happened. When I was 16 to 17 years old, I worked as a lifeguard at a private pool in my neighborhood. You had to be a member and each member was assigned a member ID. You could buy a friend or guest pass. During the summers on Friday night, we had what was called Friday Night Cheers, where we would have a band play and all of the adults would sit around the bar and drink. Then all of the kids would come and swim till about 10 p.m. One night while I was working Cheers, I was at the diving well, and there was this guy and his friend that were trying to splash me while going off the diving board. I didn't think anything of it because every kid tries to splash the lifeguard. It's not anything too crazy. As it was getting close to closing, I started to go around and clean up all the tables. The diving board guy had started to follow me around the pool and make small talk. I'm a pretty friendly person, so I started having a conversation with him. He tells me his name and that he's 19 years old and home from college. Then he asked me for my number. I told him no and that I don't give out my number to strangers and that I also have a boyfriend. He won't stop asking and saying that he just wants to be friends. So I then leave and go and sit in the guard shack. A couple of days go by and I'm working and he's there yet again. We're not really supposed to talk to people while we're on duty, but he won't go away, so I just ignore him. He stops talking, but just kind of hangs out in the water right beside me. 
A guy that I work with comes to take my spot so that I can go relieve another guard at another station. The guy follows me, but I ignore him. This continues every single day. One day I get a text from a number I don't know. I ask who it is and, what do you know, it's the guy from the pool. The only way I can think that he got my number is from our schedule that hangs in the guard shack that's right by the door which is like always open. I tell him that he really needs to stop texting me and following me around. The texts eventually stop but he still continues to come to the pool like every day and follow me. I finally decide to tell my manager and she says the next time that he comes in they're going to make sure he's actually a member. Sometimes people will give their friends their member number if they know that a picture isn't attached to it on the computer. So the guy comes in and they ask for an ID. It doesn't match the information on the computer and his ID says that he's 27. I don't know why but they let him in anyway. He comes over to me and as soon as he gets about 5 feet away from me, my manager comes over and tells me to go on my break. I come back about 15 minutes later and she kicked him out. Thank God for this. Since that incident, I haven't seen him back. I guess that's the end of my creepy pool story.